All right, welcome to the next bonus installment in the Eight Essential Steps to Clawhammer Banjo video series. Uh, in this installment, I'm going to be going over the, um, the method or the system that I recommend you use for learning new tunes. Um, and especially um, for those of you who may be at all apprehensive or intimidated by the idea of uh, playing music with other people. Um, and so I'm going to cover uh, the system that I recommend, and then uh, when we're finished, I'm going to uh, present to you uh, some backing tracks for you to play along with uh, for the tune that we learned in the last installment, which was uh, Long Journey Home. So your first question may be, why in the world do we need a system for learning new tunes? Um, isn't it just kind of obvious what you're supposed to do? You just kind of learn how to play the tune with your hands and then you practice playing it, right? Well, if you've been following along the series for a little while, you may have noticed that I'm a little bit of a stickler about process or the manner in which we go about learning all this stuff. Um, I firmly believe that Anytime we fail or don't reach the goals we've set for ourselves with uh, learning music, that it has everything to do with the process we've used uh, to go about learning or how we've gone about learning, um, as opposed to whether or not we, we know we're cut out for it or we have the talent for it. Um, and I think that as long as you have the right process, if you follow the right path for learning, that your success is going to be uh, inevitable. So in my opinion, there's nothing more important than how you go about practicing when it comes to this stuff. So that's why I think it's important that we have a good system, a, sh a foolproof uh, method for learning new tunes uh, so that you are able to progress and meet all the goals you have for yourself. So when it comes to learning new tunes specifically, uh, there are several really common pitfalls that a lot of folks run into, and uh, this, uh, this system that I'm going to present here is a way of avoiding all of them. Um, the first of these is that a lot of people, when they're first starting out, uh, complain that it's, they find it really hard to memorize new tunes. That, you know, one, when they're looking at the, at the tab or the sheet music, they can play along fine, but as soon as... Um, uh, it's, you know, it's not there anymore that they struggle to remember how the tune goes. So this method will, method will give you an easy way of uh, memorizing in the, in the most efficient way possible. Second, and perhaps the greatest benefit of all, is that this method will help you to develop spot-on rhythm and timing. It's very easy when you're uh, practicing on your own uh, by yourself and first getting started to think that your timing and rhythm is just fine. And then when you go to play for someone else or play along with other musicians to find that it's not. Um, and that then you have to go all the way back to the drawing board and kind of start from scratch uh, to, to develop those skills. So using this approach, you can get, be confident that once you've learned the tune, your timing is, is solid with it and you'll be able to play it confidently uh, with other musicians or in front of other people and so forth. Third of all, uh, this method will start developing the skill of being able to play along with other people. Uh, when you're playing solo, uh, the only thing you're listening to is the sound of your own instrument. You don't have to worry about what anybody else is doing. And you can control every aspect of what you hear. Uh, and you don't have to you know, alter or adjust what you're playing in response to what other folks around you are doing. Well, if you want to play along with other people, um, you know, another musician or in a jam, um, that's a separate skill uh, in and of itself. And while practicing on your own certainly helps you towards developing that skill, the only way to really practice uh, the art of playing with someone else is to practice playing with someone else. So um, this method I'm going to teach you is a way of doing just that um, so that you'll be working on that skill at the same time that you're learning these new tunes. The fourth thing that you'll be working on using this system is developing other aspects of musicianship that will fuel your growth as a banjo player. Um, we've already discussed that uh, you know, this, force, this method forces you to um, use your ears and will help you to develop your e ear and to help develop the skill of listening to what's going on um, as you play and using that information to sort of influence the things that you play. Uh, this system will also uh, get you to start developing connections 
uh, between the movements of your fretting hand and your picking hand and uh, the sounds that you hear. And it's these types of connections that will ultimately allow you to do things like play music by ear, learn tunes and play them on the fly, and improvise and so forth. Um, so you'll start working on the skills that will serve as the foundation for all that stuff down the line. All right, so now that hopefully I've sold you on the merits of the system I'm about to teach you, let's go over just exactly what it is. All right, the first step, and it's a critically important step, is to get the tune in your head before you start trying to learn it. And I can't really emphasize this one enough because it's really important and it's oftentimes overlooked. And it's one of those things that uh, leads to a lot of pro unnecessary problems down the line. What I'd recommend you do is that, you know, if you're learning a particular arrangement or a particular tune, listen to that arrangement as many times as it takes to implant that uh, melody in your head so that you can, you know, hum it or sing it or whatever. And even if you don't like the sound of your own voice, just make sure you can, you can hum it in your head to yourself. Um, and if you can't do that, then you're not ready to start learning and you need to keep listening to it. So um, in any of the tunes that I teach, I'll always be playing uh, an example of how the final, final product should sound so that you know or so that you'll have that in your head before you start learning. Okay, so don't neglect this one. Know how it's supposed to sound before you get started. All right, the second step is to learn the tune in short chunks. So don't try to learn the whole thing in one shot. Um, our memories uh, work best when we break things down into small chunks, focus on that, and then move on. And if you recall from the um, tune that I taught in the last video, which was Long Journey Home, I broke that into four sections of equal length. They were each four measures each. So uh, work on each chunk at a time, get that down until you move to the next chunk. So step three is to get your eyes off the tab or the sheet music as soon as possible. So once you've learned one of these little chunks, um, start trying to play, uh, play through it without looking at the tab in front of you. And if you find that you still forget, um, you know, if it's a four, me four measures long and you forget part of it, see if you can play just two measures or one measure or whatever it takes. In the beginning, you'll probably find that uh, you'll have to use smaller chunks. And as you progress as a player, you'll find that you're able to sort of memorize larger bits at a time. Step four, is to then play the tune along with an external timekeeping device. So earlier I said that it's really easy when you're playing on your own to, for your timing to be off and for you to not realize it. And really the only way for you to know whether your timing is right or not is to play with some type of external timekeeping device. Now this is the reason that metronomes were invented um, and they're a really great tool for practicing your timing. Uh, when it comes to learning new tunes, uh, I think an even better way, if you can, is to play along with a backing track. And a backing track is really just an instrument or s instruments that are uh, playing through the tune in a, uh, or playing through this chord progression of the tune in a steady fashion. And what this gives you is all the benefits of the metronome, so you get the steady rhythm to play against. Plus, you get to hear the chord changes of the song. Um, and, uh, and check yourself to know whether you're in the right part of the song and so forth, which uh, gets you uh, in the habit of uh, playing and listening to other musicians. And if you do this sort of thing with the backing track, you'll know full well that uh, if you do end up playing the tune with someone else, that you'll be more than ready for it. This will also get you in the habit of hearing and familiarizing yourself uh, with the chord changes uh, that are occurring in the tune that you're playing, which is another aspect of musicianship that you'll benefit from down the line. Now, when you're playing along with the metronome or a backing track, uh, first start with a, a slow setting um, and sort of find the speed where you can play through the tune cleanly and with good timing. And once you can, then move to a faster setting. Uh, in, the backing, in the video uh, backup jam tracks that I provide, like the one we're going to get to in a minute, um, I uh, give you three different speeds to practice along with. One is a slow speed to start with, 
then a moderate tempo, and then what I call performance speed. Um, and as you're going through those, once again, I'd recommend you try playing through these without looking at the tab. Now, in the uh, jam tracks that I, that I give you, you will see the tab of running through at the top um, and at least one uh, rendition through it, uh, but then it will disappear so that you can then practice playing along uh, without looking at it. And if you find that you're unable to do so, then perhaps it's a good time to go back to breaking the tune into chunks, finding the ones you're having a hard time memorizing and working specifically on those. You'll also find in the uh, video jam tracks that I give you that uh, you'll see the chord changes at the bottom of the screen as the tune progresses. So you'll also know what those are and you'll see how to finger them if you want to try doing that as well. The fifth step is to then identify and isolate any problem spots uh, in the tune. Perhaps one of the greatest benefits of playing along with uh, a backup track is it's really good at, at shining a spotlight on any weak areas in the tune. And you're almost sure to find part when you first start working on it that there are certain parts that are harder for you to get through than others. Um, and this could be as short as you know two notes together or, or whatnot. So the first step is to identify what those problem spots are. And then once you do, to sort of loop through them over and over again until you can play them as well as you can play the stronger parts of the tune. Ultimately, you know, your final rendition of a tune is only gonna be as good as its, as its weakest link or its weakest part. So if you make sure all the parts are strong, then you'll end up with a really strong tune. And finding these problem spots is a really efficient way of using your practice time. It also helps to ensure that you don't move on to more challenging arrangements before you're ready for them. And the last step is for you to release your tune out into the wild. If you've progressed uh, through, these, through this sequence of steps and you can play along with the performance speed backing track without looking at the tab, then you know your tune is ready to, to be released out into the wild. Um, so play it for yourself, play it for friends and family, jam with other musicians. Um, keep playing it until it becomes like an old friend and you'll, you'll have it for the rest of your life. Now last week I taught you the tune Long Journey Home um, and uh, we, we did the first part in this tune learning sequences, sequence where we broke it down into chunks and uh, now I've created the backing tracks for it so you can uh, proceed through the rest of the steps in this tune learning system. And you'll find the um, video uh, backup jam tracks for Long Journey Home uh, over at uh, clawhammerbanjo.net forward slash journey. Uh, there you'll see a playlist uh, that has uh, all three backup tracks, the slow, uh, moderate, and performance speed tracks for you to practice along with. And now for part two of this video, I'm going to teach you the tune Will the Circle Be Unbroken? And like Long Journey Home, it's a Brain Joe Level 1 arrangement, um, meaning that it draws upon the techniques that we've already covered in the eight essential steps to Clawhammer Banjo.